Hello, I'm Allison, and welcome to my weekly meltdowns breakdown of American Horror Story Season 5, Episode 3, entitled Mommy. I thought this was a great episode. We finally got some plot revelations. We met Ramona Royale, played by the great Angela Bassett. We dipped into uh, Dr. Alex Lowe's demons of her own. We finally found out what Lady Gaga plans to do with Will Drake, and we really got balls deep into the extremely aggressively dysfunctional relationship between Iris and Donovan. They also, ta this week, I think the, the commandment that they're going to really zero in on is thou shalt not bear false witness. Because when that shit happens, you wake up, or you don't, with your tongue nailed to something. Ew. Okay, I got a lot to cover, so let's just get into it. We start out with Tristan. He ends up back on the seventh floor. He basically reintroduces himself to James Marge. He's walking around. He's saying, look, I'm on board. I'm buying what you're selling. I'm down with this murder stuff. Come out. Come talk to me. I'm going to lay here on the bed till you come out. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. So, James March shows up. And he's like, how do you know everything about me? And Tristan's like, well, I Googled you. And he's like, oh my God, that sounds obscene. Tell me more. And he's like, look, I, I want to use your hotel how you intended it to be used. I want to use these dark hallways. I want to use your torture chamber. I'm Like I said, I'm down. I want to do it all. So, March is all about some psychotic praise. So he takes Dandy to his special black closet. The only way that I can really, it, it, it just looks like a just a torture chamber with a gigantic human-sized drill bit dildo coming out of the wall and you just push someone into it and it goes through you and you die. And Mark shows him this. He's trusting him. And he's like, look, I want you to use my hotel, like you said, the way God intended. And in the middle of the conversation, Will Drake shows up with Naomi Campbell and Locke Lynn. And Will Drake's like, what the fuck are you doing here? You cut your face. You quit. You were supposed to leave. And Tristan's like, no, I'm super beautiful now. I can't really tell you why, but I'm here to see a friend. I'm not a squatter. And Will Drake goes up to him and starts to, like touching his face like, what happened to you? And Tristan's like, look, stop touching me, dude. I'm not going to sit here and be a deposit in your spank bank. And then Lachlan says something to his dad that my closed captioning couldn't even uh, ex translate. So if anybody can tell me what that kid said, I'd appreciate it. So, after Will leaves with Naomi Campbell and Lachlan, uh, you know, Miss Evers and James Smart show back up. And they're like, what the fuck are we going to do? They can't remodel this shit. This is our floor. This is our torture chamber floor. And Tristan's like, look, I got this. I'm going to take care of it. Trust me. Don't worry. I'm, don't worry. Calm down. You're still going to have a place to launder your damn sheets. So, later on... Will Drake is going over the, the plans of the, the hotel. And Tristan Duffy Mott, just, Dandy just shows up. And Will's like, how the hell did you get in here? And he's like, oh, I just, I just snuck in. I know this hotel really well now. And then that's the end of that creepy conversation. So Tristan tries to seduce Will Drake. He's sitting there. Oh, so you're looking at these plans as he's thrust in his pelvis in his fucking face and that's just a little too much for will drake so they end up making out aggressively and dandy pulls out a knife and he's gonna totally stab this guy in the neck and kill him and he looks up and he sees countess lady gaga stand there and she's like mm -mm, no she puts the kibosh on that real quick which we will get into later but we now know which my gaydar was going insane crazy but yes will drake is gay we also found out this episode that Alex Lowe, Detective Lowe's wife, never wanted to be a mother. 
She wanted to take care of other people's kids. That's why she became a pediatrician. Now, when she married John Lowe and they had Scarlett, uh, little Jessica Simpson Jr., apparently she didn't have any motherly feelings for her little girl at all. I'm just wondering if there were any wire hangers in the house. Anyway, so she finally enjoyed being a mother when her son was born. And he smelled like lavender, and he slept with her, and he loved her more than John, and she loved him more than Scarlett, blah, 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 and all that. Well, then he disappeared, and she went crazy, and she slit her wrists in the bathtub, which she follows up with a real quick, but I was handling it. Okay. I don't know about you, but if you slit your wrist to handle things around here, that gets you put on a bus to crazy town. End of that discussion. We then go into one of their family therapy sessions. I don't, they need to fire their therapist, just for the record. So anyway, they're in their family therapy, and it's all about Alex. Oh my God, Scarlett, you're doing this to hurt me. It's all about me. And Scarlett's like, no. I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this because it's true and pretty much dad knows it's true. And why you won't fucking man up and say anything, I don't know why. But no, it's not about you. I'm not trying to hurt you. So in the meantime, um, what's her name? The doctor, whatever. She asks to meet John at the Hotel Cortez bar. And John is has just come off one of the uh, Ten Commandment killer crime scenes. A new one that just came up. And he's freaking out. He's on edge. Whatever. And she looks at John and says what every recovering alcoholic wants to hear. You're tense. Why don't you go ahead and have a drink? And then proceeds to tell him, well, you know what? You're a fake alcoholic. You want to know why you're a fake alcoholic? Because you don't go to AA. So, apparently that makes you a fake alcoholic if you don't go to AA. Okay. So, she basically says, I want a divorce. Here are the divorce papers. He has a freaking anxiety attack over everything that's going on. She, she's like, okay, well, let me take you up to your room. So they go up to her room, his room. She lays him down the bed and they start making out and they're about to have sex. And he just whispers in her ear, you know, what every woman wants to hear when they're about to divorce you is, let's have a baby. Let's have another baby. Let's have another child to fix this fucking marriage. Because everyone knows Having a kid fixes everything. Anyway, so she gets the fuck out of there and says, <laughs> divorce paper's on the table. I'm out of here. I'm hopping off this crazy train. So when she's in the hallway, she sees Holden. And she is able to run to him, and this kid doesn't move. He runs from everyone else that he sees in the hallway, but he doesn't run from her. And she's able to go up to him and kneels down in front of him, and he just says, Hi, Mommy. Which brings us to the man in the mattress. So, apparently, Naomi Campbell is murdered by Gabriel, the drill bit dildo uh, victim number one, or the only victim that we've seen so far. And he gets out, just fucking bludgeons her to death completely. 100% dead. Well, he ends up getting out of the room, and he collides with um, Detective Lowe in the hallway, and they end up taking him to the emergency room, and they're, tell they're telling the gurney, they're telling the doctors, they're telling him everything that's wrong, and he's apologizing. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kill her. And Detective Lowe's like, who did you not mean to kill? And he said, I didn't mean to kill Naomi Camel. I meant to kill Sally. Okay, so this is where this is where the episode got a little nuck and fuds. Okay, so John Lowe goes back to the hotel, busts in Sally's room, places her ass under arrest. They're in the elevator, and she starts just working her fucking weird ass voodoo on him and the next thing you know um she's jerking him off and he's into it and the lights are flickering and drill bit dildo is is like yeah no yeah no 
are we doing this or is this your am i what, what's going on here this entire scene kind of threw me off because when the next thing you know sally has disappeared like vapor so yes i guess 100 percent she is a ghost but i just thought it was i, I don't know I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave that one there. Now it gets real. We're going to get into the real talk. We're getting in to Donovan and Iris. We're going to get into this fucked up, typical mother-son relationship. So this all starts, Iris has good intentions. She's like, look, Donovan, and he's walking through the lobby. I found, I found this apartment and... It's cute. It's not in the best part of town, but it, you know, it's two bedroom and it would be great for us. And he informs her, lady, I would rather live in the deepest, darkest sewer covered in vast amount of nasty fucking Mexican food type diarrhea than ever, ever live with you. So apparently... Iris was a crazy as hell mother, and Daddy left, but before he left, he made Donovan promise, look, you better get the fuck out as soon as you can, because this, this crazy shit, this isn't gonna stop. Mama was a member of a vegan cult. I'm sorry, an insane vegan cult. I swear to God, I, these things exist. I, wow. So apparently, she fed her son so much fiber because of the insane vegetarian cult that he shit himself repeatedly, a lot, like at school. And apparently, no, there's no apparently. This kid got picked on for this. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever. So he's got a big chip on his shoulder. And I can't really blame him. Your mother's in an insane vegetarian cult. What the fuck? And you're eating so much fiber, you can't trust a sneeze. He just says, look, I'm about to move out. I'm done. She's throwing a hissy fit. Oh, my God. I'm nothing without you. I don't know what to do with without you and Donovan just like gets on her level and says look you don't know what to do without me kill yourself and either way if you do know what to do I don't give a shit you can just kill yourself just kill yourself some people might find exchanges like that with their mother odd to me I would just call that Thursday so now we finally get to meet Ramona Royale, the star of Slaughter Sister and Silky Fine. I'm going to be honest with you, when they very first showed her in, a, in the film with the gun in the hotel room, the guy on the bed, I thought it was going to be a porno. I thought she, she might have been a retired porno actress. That was the first thought that went through my mind. But I was wrong, but I don't think I was alone. I think, you, whatever, but you know what I'm saying. So we meet Ramona at first when Donovan is out um, feeding off drug addicts and I guess this makes him a little loopy because when he's walking over to Ramona he gets his little knife out and he's like hey are you looking for what are you doing in your trunk you need help and she's like nope boom knocks him the fuck out puts him in her trunk we find out that Ramona Royale was a big B-movie actress. She made all kinds of, like I said, Silky Fun and Slaughter Sister and all this stuff. Now, um, she has a hard time, apparently, getting jobs because, I guess because she's black and they all want, like, Jane Fonda. So, she meets Countess Cortez. She comes in, throws a smack down during this meeting that's going to escalate to the hotel room and drinks with the sleazy producer. I just want to point out a fun fact. The sleazy producer was the guy that starred in the original American Werewolf in London. IMDB that shit. Anyway, so Countess Lady Gaga is like, you know what? You're going to come with me. You're going to come with me. We're going to make love. 
I'm going to cut my boob and you're going to suck blood. You're going to get the blood virus and you're going to be young forever. And then they do this crazy wardrobe changing montage in the elevator that goes from 1977 until 1991 when I guess Countess Elizabeth thinks she's Madonna, and who's that girl era, and Count, and no, uh, sorry, Ramona Royale is still looking good as Ramona Royale. Now, they get into a routine, which is a, th I'm thinking there's a theme here with Countess Elizabeth Ga Gaga. She, she's bored easy, and when that happens, you're kind of out the door. So, you know, Ramona's feeling it. This big time rapper comes to the hotel and he's recording there and she decides, you know what? I'm down with you. You're hot. Yes, you have a dick, but that's okay. I'm in love with you. I'm going to make you my creation. That's a big nay nay. Nay nay. Countess Lady Gaga does not play that shit. So she comes in, shoots dudes in the face, kills him after he's been turned. So I guess, yeah, bullets, bitch, please can kill you. And she is pissed. She's crying. She's like, look, um, I created you. You don't create other people. You're here for me. So that ended the relationship. They spent a good 14 years together. And all of this is being explained to Donovan while he is strapped to a chair. And after all of this, after she has gone through the whole relationship, the whole kink caboodle, Donovan's like, so you want me to help you? And Ramona's like, um, you are going to help me. The only way to hurt this crazy bitch is to take those little blonde-headed kids and kill them. And you're going to help me do it. And Donovan's like, that's awesome. But she dumped me last Tuesday. And she's like, oh, okay. Cut some loose. And she's like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not trying to nitpick or anything. But Donovan could have brought that up in the beginning to save her the time to tell the story. I'm just saying. I hate it when people do it. Just, just stop me in the beginning. Don't let me tell the whole story. Because God knows I'll talk for days. Just cut me off at the word go. So meanwhile, Donovan goes back to the hotel. And he's feeling real sorry for himself. And he goes to the bar where Liz Taylor's like, Shame on you for talking to your mother the way you did. You know, you can fuck, screw, fall in love with whoever you want on this planet. But no one... No one will ever love you the way your mama does. You had a crazy as shit mom, but you know what? Your dad left and your mama put food in your mouth. It may have given you the shits, but you had clothes on, didn't you? You had clothes to catch that shit. So what the fuck is your problem? You need to march your little ass up there and apologize. And Donovan's like, yeah, okay, you're right. I I'm going to go apologize. Because I kind of need a place to live and whatever. But okay, you're right. So meanwhile, while he's going up to apologize, you know, Iris is taking his advice. She's killing herself. She has asked Sally to inject her with enough heroin to make her OD. And Sally's like, has zero. Okay, sure, no problem. Uh, just I just need to know beforehand, before I kill you, that you don't have any unfinished business. Because I don't want you haunting my hotel walls, bitch. She's like, no, I've got nothing left. So, Sally gives her enough heroin to kill an elephant, and it does nothing. She's still alive. So, she takes a bag and puts it over her head, which in turn kills her. So, what's his name? Donovan shows up, and Sally opens the door and she's like, look, your mom's busy kind of dying right now. She, I had to kill her because she asked me to because you're a fucking bastard of a son. And um, why are you getting upset? She's just doing what you told her to do. So Donovan, he's like, you selfish bitch. And I'm like, really? Did you not tell her to kill herself? Anyway, so he cuts himself open and he puts the blood in Iris's mouth. And what's her name? Sally just, just whips. So, well, that's some twisted poetic justice. So now Iris has the virus. So what did we learn this week? What did we learn this week? Lady Gaga lost all her money from Bernie Madoff. She tried to seduce Will Drake who said, look, my dick is limp when it comes to ladies. She's like, whatever. And they're making out and it got hard anyway. Tristan busts in and 
he's like, what's going on? And Lady Gaga's pissed. She drags his ass down to the bar and is like, look, my money got stolen by Bernie Madoff, okay? And we have nothing. So I've got to marry this guy and take every goddamn cent he's got. Do you understand? Can you not fuck this up? So that's the big plot revelation. I'm sorry, I forgot. I totally just threw that in there. But that's why she's after Will Drake. And I don't think she has any intentions to turn him, but I do believe she's going to marry him and take his money and get the hotel back. So this was a great episode. It was only an hour and 16 minutes. I thought that was awesome. Um, next week is the big American Horror Story Halloween episode, and it's got, uh, it looked like, Gacy in it, uh, Varnos in it, or Warnos, whatever that woman's name is, and a bunch of other crazy psychotic killers. I think it's going to be great, and I can't wait to see it. But I'm glad that they shortened the episode a little bit because whew, this is killing me. So with that being said, please go to YouTube and like my weekly meltdown. Go to Facebook, like my weekly meltdown. Go to Instagram and follow the dot Memphis darling. Go to Twitter twat at Summers S O M M E R S nineteen seventy seven and follow me on Twitter. I hope everyone is happy and doing what they are supposed to be doing in life. And and thank you so much for watching this. Please like and share as much as you possibly can. Um, I do this, and I also cover The Walking Dead, and I'm going to start um, actually posting personal rants on just things that I deem significant and that kind of piss me off in general. So I hope you guys enjoy that as well, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I will see you next week. And remember, no matter what happens in life, you better be nice to your mommy.